Magnesium is essential for about 80% of the functions in your body. But about 50 to 65% of Americans are chronically deficient in magnesium. Not a good combination or not a good situation there. There's probably a lot of you thinking now, okay, I should probably take magnesium as a supplement, but there's so many magnesium supplements out there. How do you figure out which is gonna be the best for you? In 10 seconds, I'm gonna take you through all of them and look at the pros and the cons. You don't wanna miss this. Hi, I'm Sage. It's great to be here with you. I'm here to be your source of cutting edge wellness information that can help you find answers to become happier and healthier. Please support us by hitting the subscribe button and ringing the notification bell. This just takes a second to do and it does so much to support our tiny family business. And as you may know, I'm very passionate about supporting you on your health journey, not just with educational information, but also with the amazing products that I've created for our company. You can follow the link in the description below to find the highest quality, healthiest gourmet chocolates, delicious elixir blends, and the purest, most potent adaptogens. Now, let's talk about magnesium. Any normal conversation about magnesium, I usually start off talking about chocolate, actually, because cacao is indeed the highest natural food source of magnesium. But today, we're gonna stick to just talking about supplements. One of the most popular kinds of magnesium supplement is magnesium citrate, where you have magnesium bound to citric acid. This is one of the more bioavailable forms of magnesium. And then when you get up to pretty higher doses, it can start becoming a pretty powerful laxative. It does this by pulling water into the intestines, and this helps to make bowel movements softer and easier to pass. So this could be very helpful for a lot of people, but for some people, they might not want the extra laxative effect, but they might be shooting for a higher dose of magnesium, so citrate might not be the ideal fit for them. But so many people out there are pretty blocked up, so for a lot of people, magnesium citrate is going to indeed be really good. Now, the next one is magnesium oxide. This is where you have magnesium combined with oxygen, very poorly absorbed. So it's not used for nutritional magnesium, but instead more purely for relief of indigestion and constipation. Then the third option is magnesium chloride, where you have magnesium and chlorine combined. This is pretty well absorbed for nutrition and for constipation relief as well. So it's kind of a nice middle ground. Uh, it's also often used topically as, as a magnesium oil almost that you can put on your skin for topical absorption. Let's say you wanna get some muscle relaxation in a certain area. This can be a nice tool to use topically. Then you have magnesium lactate, where you have magnesium is combined with lactic acid. And here, this is not often used as a supplement. It's more commonly used um, to fortify processed foods. Um, it's fairly well absorbed and gentler on digestion, which is why you generally see it in those formats. Um, then you have magnesium malate, where you have magnesium bound to malic acid. And this is pretty well absorbed and it's less of a laxative than other types. So if you're going more for the nutritional effect and less for the laxative effect, magnesium malate is one worth considering. Then an interesting one is magnesium taurate. This is where you have magnesium bound with the amino acid taurine. And this may be the best for managing high blood pressure and high blood sugar because of that taurine in there and the effects that it has. But more research is definitely needed in this area. Then the next one, which I get pretty excited about, is magnesium l 3 8 where you have magnesium bound to threonic acid. And this is one that was just developed a few years ago by MIT researchers. And it's so interesting because it's able to cross the blood-brain barrier, which other magnesium supplements generally cannot, and raise brain levels of magnesium. One animal study actually found a 54% increase in brain levels of magnesium when using magnesium l 3 8 so this can then help depression, age-related memory loss, and it's actually been shown to reverse clinical measures of brain aging by nine years. How is this happening? Well, in the brain, you have magnesium protecting the functions of synapses. Synapses are the communication points between brain cells. And for learning and memory formation, these synapses need something called plasticity. This is the ability to adapt and change in response to stimuli. And this declines as you're getting older and older and older, this plasticity, but magnesium can help 
to reintroduce more plasticity or, or improve existing plasticity, perhaps is better to say. So as you can tell, magnesium L3 and 8 is one of my personal favorite kinds. Uh, but then we also have a few other types we're going to talk about here. Magnesium sulfate. Um, this is where you have magnesium with sulfur and oxygen also known as Epsom salt. So this can be consumed for constipation benefits, but it tastes so horrible that nobody does this, honestly. Um, and it's usually just used either as a, something you put in bath water or for skincare. Then another one of my personal favorites is magnesium glycinate, where you have magnesium bound to glycine. And this is very well absorbed, very easily absorbed. And it's known for its calming properties and can be helpful with anxiety, depression, stress, insomnia. And this is less of a laxative than magnesium citrate. So you can get up to some higher doses for nutritional and anti-anxiety benefits, for example, without having to be running to the bathroom. Um, and the glycine effect actually increases the calming effects of magnesium glycinate. Then the last one I want to mention here is magnesium orotate, where you have magnesium bound to erotic acid. And here you have really good absorption. You don't really get laxative effects. Um, and there are some early research indications that it can be protecting heart health because of the way that the erotic acid plays a unique role in the energy production pathways in the heart and in the blood vessels. And this is very popular amongst athletes and people with heart disease, but in general, People don't bother with this uh, very commonly because it's so expensive compared to other pretty competitive forms of magnesium like magnesium glycinate or magnesium citrate. So to give you an idea of how much more expensive it is, I compared from one brand uh, the price of a magnesium orotate and a, a magnesium glycinate. So I looked at the brand Cal, K-A-L for this. And so I looked at what does it cost from this brand to get 200 milligrams worth of magnesium uh, basically a small dose like 200 milligram dose of magnesium orotate and a 200 milligram dose of magnesium glycinate. So for 200 milligrams of magnesium orotate, you're paying 83 cents. 200 milligrams of magnesium and glycinate, you're only paying 17 cents. So it's a, a huge price gap there. So that's something everyone will have to consider and see what works best for them. Now, there's not the perfect study out there that I would love to be able to put up on the screen for you, going through this exact list of 10 and comparing how well they absorb. Um, the closest thing to this that I found though, uh, I will link to in the description if you wanna check it out, and it compared a bunch of different forms of magnesium, and even amongst certain individual forms like magnesium citrate, it compared from a bunch of different companies. So this is pretty interesting to see. And so at the top of the list of absorption was magnesium citrate, getting about 95% absorption. Uh, but there was also another magnesium citrate in third place and another magnesium citrate way down low uh, at 42%. So it definitely, you gotta be thinking about what brand you're having here. Not all magnesium citrate supplements clearly are created equal. And that pretty much goes for all supplements out there. Uh, second place was one called magnesium glycerophosphate. Uh, this is one that I did not include in the list of 10 today because it's really not very widely available. Uh, the only company that I've seen selling it uh, is based in Belgium and only sells it there. It's not something you can really get your hands on in America. Um, and then in fourth place was magnesium glycinate lysinate. So unfortunately in this study, there was not a pure magnesium glycinate that they were looking at. There was just this one in fourth place that is magnesium glycinate mixed with also lysinate as well. Um, so lysine and glycine as opposed to just glycine. So that's pretty high up there on the list. Unfortunately, one of my favorite ones, magnesium l 3 8 was not included in the study. So we'll have to see in the future on that one, but it certainly, if you were looking at what's gonna cross the blood-brain barrier, l 3 8 is the absolute king. So if you take a magnesium supplement, let me know in the comments below what your experience with it has been and which one it is that you're taking. And before you go, over here is a video that I think you would enjoy watching next. And on the other side is a video that the YouTube algorithm thinks you would enjoy watching next. And up here is a link to our website. Have a beautiful day, guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.